Hey, thanks for joining me. Um, inside image. Uh, I feel like I've seen these things somewhere before. Um, I'm not surprised that Image Comics would be publishing just like a little black and white interview book with their own creators just to show off the stuff that's coming out. I mean, they had endless cash, so why not? So in a box of comics that one of the viewers sent me, um, this was in there. And normally I wouldn't, I mean... I mean, it's not exactly a comic book, but, you know, it's kind of a artifact from the era of the 90s with the image guys. And it's got Dragon on at least one cover, you know, Cyber Force on the other. So I figured why not just flip this open. And when I did get this, whoever owned this before was going through and writing little notes in this just to probably entertain themselves. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. But like this says, inside, and then you put your mom. So I was kind of having a little bit of a giggle fest <laughs> with this thing, with whatever this person's doing. Um, whoever owned this before back in the 90s, whoever may have had it. So it's kind of funny. But um, they're talking about... Uh, this Tony Lobito is talking about, you know, things are coming up for Image Comics, but he says, I humbly predict one of our hottest books will be Savage Dragon number one. We're talking about the uh, regular series. Um, talking about Free Force is going to be in there. Talking about Jim Lee's Union, which they talk about in here. Dooms 4 from Liefeld. Um, just things that are going on. So there's an interview with Larson about Dragon. So, I don't know if there's anything in here that's exactly new that we haven't heard before. But uh, just kind of, they talk to him about what's he going to do with this book? Are there going to be any other crossovers? Where's the dragon going to go? Are we ever going to find out his origin? He says, yeah, you gotta, you're going to have to keep, keep reading for that, which is fine. And then an interview with Mike Heisler about Union. Now, Mike Heisler was a letterer. And for some reason, he got to write comics. I, you know, I guess if you're hounding your boss and um, eventually just kind of convince him to let you, like, give me a chance. Let me write a book. And if you, you know, they believe in you, you get the chance. Did he ever write anything that was interesting? Did Wildstorm Studios ever produce anything story-wise that was interesting when the original creative guys were in control there with Brandon Choi and Jim Lee? No, they absolutely were not. There was not one interesting, interesting story ever until Jim Lee gave Wildcats to Alan Moore. You know, there's probably a couple others, but this stuff was not interesting. I've reviewed Union. That comic sucked. It's like they get this idea of like this. I think it's supposed to be like a... Um, he says, Union is a soldier from another world who's been fighting in a civil war that's been going on for over 75 years. He comes to our world totally by accident and basically the basic storyline of the four issue mini series deals with a bunch of events that decide him to remain on Earth as one of its superpowered protectors. Sure. Um, there was nothing interesting. It's kind of like, I was going to say it's an interesting design, but I don't even know if it is. Honestly, Jim Lee can make almost anything look awesome. And I kind of dig these. That's fine. But it was not a great book. Dragon is so much better in every conceivable way. Uh, Shaman's Tears. So whoever owned this book before it says, Cry me a river of Shaman's Tears. And then they also wrote, My costume is so gay. I swear to you, I did not write these in here. I don't do that type of shit. But I'm giggling at this. And then you got Shadowhawk. And he says, this is Spinal Tap. So that's funny. Um, this one, Bloodstrike number three. I'm pretty sure this is Dan Fraga pencil artwork. And, you know, I have went hard against Fraga for some of his stuff, um, the books that he's done. But that's not that's that's pretty good i mean you put in the time and effort on those buildings in the background and the figures kind of work it's not bad um brigade i'm pretty sure that this is marat oh yeah marat and perez inks by cover by michaels and perez did perez ink marat that must have been interesting the guy wrote our this art sucks 
It's it's not great. Uh, some penciled work from Jeff Matsuda. That's kind of interesting. It's like a poor reproduction of it all. And boy, poor diehard's chin. And that like that's a hard angle to get the chin right. That's tricky. But Matsuda got really good really quick. Uh, the Max. He says, "Look at my booty, y'all." Max number four coming out. Tribe. That a psychotic comic there. And then there's just some like color pinups of Union there, which we've already seen this image like two, three times in this book already. And then just some pages from Dragon. Just, just cause, right? Like, why not? Oh, and then it flips over. So we got to get to the other side. Cyber Force Zero, I think it is, drawn by Walt Simonson. Look, I know I'm going to get in trouble for this. I've seen so much better artwork from Walt Simonson. This Cyber Force Zero, I, I, I don't have it, but I know someone who did. I flipped through it. Didn't like it one bit. I don't think Walt Simonson's style fits in the Image Comics kind of era with these characters, especially when I'm used to seeing Sylvester or David Finch draw them. I don't think this looked good at all. I was not a fan. Um... So, and then whoever was writing, they just wrote a bunch of band names. Alice in Chains, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Guns N' Roses, Danzig, Testament, The Toadies. Just writing a bunch of names in there. Why? Who knows? So then we get Cyber Force Zero, an interview with Silvestri and Walt Simonson. So that's kind of cool. Uh, me, I'm kind of interested in seeing this black and white artwork. It's not the greatest reproductions of... Um, Sylvester's black and white work, which is what I really want to see. That was That's a double-page spread, so that's kind of fun to get to see this thing in its entirety. It's pretty awesome. But they just talk about the book that's coming up and how it happened. And um, He says, why do you choose to do a Cyber Force special? And Walt says, uh, I did it because Mark asked me. So I'm sure also the money must have been fantastic. And, you know, give Walt Simonson a good payday. He deserves that. Um, Rob Liefeld's Doom 4. Uh, Dooms 4. Steven Spielberg and his company have bought the picture. I'm going to be writing the initial treatment for it. Um, as well as designing the characters, and I'll be co-producer on the project. I'm really excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah, nothing happened. He liked to talk about this. I met with Will Smith. I met with Tom Cruise. I met with Steven Spielberg. I'm sure he did. And guess what come of all of that? Nothing. You know, I feel like um, until you know it's actually getting made, I wouldn't start telling people it looks like it's going to happen. It says here in the interview, from what I hear, you've reached an agreement with Steven Spielberg to make Dooms 4 into a movie. Is, how, is that going to happen? He says, yeah, that's the way it looks. I've had a chance to meet with Spielberg a number of times, and and there's a lot of excitement about this project on both sides, of course. He and his company, Amblin, have bought the picture. I'm going to be writing the initial treatment, blah, 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 just like you said. I mean, what about this Dooms 4 thing made Steven Spielberg excited? He's made some of the biggest movies in the history of ever. And Rob Liefeld's Dooms 4 was the one that caught his eye? I just think that Spielberg doesn't know anything about comic books, if I had to guess. Um... Because he's a movie guy. He doesn't read comic books. If he did, he was a kid. But he, as a kid, I think he was probably, be, you know, working on becoming a filmmaker, making his movies. But maybe somebody approached him and was like, hey, comics are big. Liefeld's big. He's got an idea. It's called Dooms 4. And then I bet you Liefeld could sell a project. You know, he, he likes to talk and the excitement about it and what could be. So whatever. None of that happened. And then, again, whoever owned this just started writing comic artist names. There's everybody you could almost imagine in this list of them writing in here for some reason. Don't know why. But yeah, there's that Walt Simonson black and white Cyber Force Zero art. Again, I'm sorry. Like it's I, I like the black and white better than the color on the cover. But that's just I've I've seen his work on Thor and things like that. And I think it just looks so much better over there. It just fits that. Yeah, his style i don't think fits with the image comics nonsense um it says we are not drawn by john byrne and i was like is this john byrne but i think this is victor bridges wildcat's source book um not 
Not a great drawing. I mean, I have no problem with Victor Bridges as an artist or, or as a human being. I've never liked his artwork. And I think that's him and I don't like it at all. I don't think he's very good in this era. I don't know what he does anymore, but what do I know? He was getting comics published and uh, I wish I was. And so what do I know? I know nothing. Trencher, nothing that excited me. It's interesting, but not my thing. Death Blow, I like the art style. I wish Jim Lee would do that more. He won't. Uh, 1963, Alan Moore, Veach, Bissett, Simpson, Brown. Those are books I want to get my hands on. Phantom Force. Uh, that's a rough reproduction of some Kirby work. I think the image guys, or some of them, helped ink over him. Kirby, Liefeld, Larson, Thibodeau, Giffen, Ordaway, Gordon, cover by Kirby and Larson. That's interesting. Spawn number 14. Somebody just wrote the word goobers in there. And then you got Supreme by Brian Murray rushing at us. It says, call me Superman again. So... And then there's a black and white shot of uh, Ballistic from Cyberforce number one. Somebody wrote, oh, hey, girl, with little hearts. Um, so, yeah, just kind of interesting. Anyway, and then we're back to the centerfold of the book. So, I don't know, inside image, just an interesting little thing. It's not nothing, you know, interviews, but not really critical information. It's just, just a little funny little artifact from a time long since gone. And I just thought I'd show it, just make a quick video here. So I guess that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.